cycle between Silene and Palpat in order to make sure that he doesn't deck himself out, along with Team Yield's Cheers. So those two cards could be important, but there are two copies of Peonia to access the prize cards. Perfect starter for Hale, Snorlax with block. Nobody's moving as long as Snorlax is here. Checking the prize cards, we do see the Tempting Trap Mawile. It's a card that we haven't really seen in control in a while. Yeah, Mawile definitely uh, has had a lot of hype previously, but has not um, has not been seen in a long time. And I think it suffers the same effect as Norlax. Like, if you expect Mawile, then you tech for it, but when people don't expect it, it's really hard. And it traps the... It has the same trapping effect as Snorlax, if you will, also increases the damage. Probably not going to be relevant in this case, but three trapping Pokemon. We'll have to see how Hale approaches this matchup. So Nest Ball being played. Hale checking the prizes. We'll see that one of those Pidgeot EX are unavailable, but besides that, you've got a lot of Pokemon you want to get down. What is your first priority? I have to assume Rotom is probably the first choice just to build up the hand a little bit, but it's actually going to be the Pidgey. So really values having Quick Search now. I didn't quite get a chance to see what Hale is sitting on, but I mean, that's, this would make sense if there's something like Rare Candy Pidgeot or maybe an Arvin or something for next turn. There was a Rare Candy Pidgeot in the prize card, so it would be pretty lucky to also have a copy of Rare Candy and Pidgeot in your hand already. There are two Pidgeots. There are three Rare Candies in the list. And so I'm really wondering, what are Joseph's options going into this match. How many switching cards does he have access to to unlock himself from the Snorlax, and how can he deal with Mimikyu? I think that's a big question mark. Well, how about both, Pablo? Pidgey and the Rotom from the hand, so exactly what you want to see. Drawing up three cards. I think at this point, Joseph is going to have to find a way to navigate this as great as possible. And oh no, this hand is not good whatsoever. Now, in this circumstance, it's not as big of a deal right. since you have time to sort of make your play out. And we are going to see the Earthen Vessel. It does get rid of a water energy normally, which is fine, but I feel like obviously you don't necessarily know if your opponent's playing things like Crushing Hammer in their deck. Uh, that isn't a cho choice so far. Just every resource you get rid of, you have to really always validate and say, do I really necessarily need to thin at this point? How much pressure do I want to put on? That's the big question. I mean, Joseph's deck is designed to be fast, so maybe that's the thought process in his head. Yeah, it also opens up a Melanie top deck if that happens to be the card he draws next turn. So definitely uh, tough choices all around. Uh, the card I'm really, I'd really like to focus on is Mimikyu, right? Hale does have a copy of Mimikyu. Joseph does play cross switchers in order to play around the Mimikyu. Does play a copy of Canceling Cologne as well to be able to knock out that Mimikyu, but what happens when a second Mimikyu hits the field? That's what I'm. That's what I want to know. Yeah. Uh, well, Radiant Greninja can attack. That is another Pokemon that can deal some damage, but it's at a hefty cost, right? Discarding two energy cards. We'll see how things go. Now, we are just going to see the attachment for turn. I mean, can use Rule the Region, but there are no Stadium cards in Joseph's stack, and it will be the Peonia right away. We'll see what prize cards were grabbed for Hale. It is going to be Erica's. Rare, Candy, and Palpad. So knowing that your other Pidgeot's in there, you can sort of hold on to this Rare Candy, and then later down the line, if you can maybe Palpad it back in or flip heads on Silene or even Team Yell's Cheer, you can access that Pidgeot and get Quick Search online, and that's your engine in this deck. Indeed. Also holding the other Peonia in his hand in case he really wanted to access the other prizes, which I believe he's really favoring. All the cards seem really good in Hale's hand, but... I'm not so I'm not sure what you would want to put back the counter catcher I guess it's fine and then maybe you just try to get access to it again with the other Peonia which you can do next turn and you get bonus cards from Rotom so looking good so far from Hale not a lot of pressure incoming from Joseph had a very underwhelming turn uh, from what it looked like right so we'll have to see Mimikyu already in the hand there's even a Peonia to follow up the following turn you also got to be careful with how many prizes are put in play, especially if your strategy is Mimikyu. Yes, Safeguard is a great ability, but like you said, if there's enough prize on the board, you can sort of gust and navigate around it, if so. Now, that Bravery Charm in the PG is actually very funny. That brings it all the way up to 100 HP. I'm not sure what that puts it out of Out range. of Moonlight Shuriken oh. range. Moonlight Shuriken, okay. Yeah. yeah, which is certainly something that could happen next turn, and picking off the Mimikyu as well, mm. so... 
Yeah, I guess I like it. Yeah, it's sort of a double edge, right? Because if you do put it on a Mimikyu, then, then it does survive a Moonlight Shuriken. So we'll see how things go. Uh, it does find a Nest Ball off the top, and you see right away, wanting to stop Rotom, and it's that Spirit Tomb. And while it isn't attacking, it's got a great uh, attack that usually is not relevant too, too much, but Fade Out can pivot it out of the active so it's not a target to be trapped by Block Snorlax. Yeah, that's it. Spirit Tomb is a double benefit for the user. You get to block out this Rotom from using the ability and providing more resources to Hail, and you also get to bring it up in case it gets trapped in the active, as you mentioned. Now, fortunately for Hale, he does have that Pidgeot EX resource, which he now just found off the prize cards with Peonia. Probably we're going to see that. And then you don't mind not drawing three extra cards each turn when you can just search for whatever you need as your card for turn. Now, last choice is what this third card is going to be off of the Peonia. You do take three, put them into your hand, and then three from your hand. Uh, go back into the prizes. But all the prize cards are going to be for Hale at this point is just pieces that I'm, he probably really doesn't need to access at this point. Indeed. It, do, it is very important, though, to make sure that you keep track of those prizes in case you need to. You need access to one of those cards later down the line. Then maybe you get back Peonia and try to unlock those once again. But yeah, Hale's setup looking pretty fantastic. Joseph wasn't able to apply pressure the previous turn, both players being very patient here, and it's on Joseph to make something happen here. And immediately, Luxray, a card that we don't see in the typical Snorlax block deck, a big inclusion for Hale. Of course, it does have that Snipe Fang attack for two colorless energy. You deal 30 damage, you look at your opponent's hand, and you can discard any trainer card you find there. And that is a big slowdown, especially against decks that are sort of struggling to set up a little bit. You get rid of some of those switching pieces, can get rid of some of those draw cards. And the more you slow the game down, the more wiggle room you have. This deck really doesn't like to be put on edge super quickly. And with Joseph's slow start, things perfectly here for Hale. Big top deck dome. Top deck's Melanie, which is pretty good. We'll get an extra three cards and we might finally see some pressure. Although we didn't see any Palkia V-Star get drawn. There is a possibility to Hydro Break for a knockout here. 200 damage, first prize card drawn. How does Hale respond from here? There's not a lot to trap, right? No, and trapping is sort of tough when you're playing against a deck that plays so many switching cards, right? You have the switch, the escape rope, you have cross switcher, so there's plenty of ways to pivot out. Now the Pidgeot EX here being promoted is actually really nice. It does have zero retreat costs, so this could signal with a quick search. If you grab double turbo energy out of the deck, you can use Snipe Fang this turn. And it's actually going to be a tool card that we don't see a lot potentially being grabbed in the deck. I mean, I don't think we've seen this at all. Regardless, it's Defiance Vest, allowing you to take 40 less damage if you're behind on prize cards. And from here on out, Hale will not be taking prize cards. So the card pretty much reads, your Pokemon take 40 less damage from your opponent's Pokemon. For the rest of the game, yeah. Definitely not a very common inclusion. Great combo, though, will protect this Luxray this turn making sure that this Fang Snipe can be used at least two turns, maybe even more. However, decides to promote the Rotom to pick it up with Penny. Yeah, understands at this point that you're not going to be using the Rotom anymore, right? The Spirit Tomb's in play. You kind of have a little bit of flexibility with what supporter card, so we are just going to see that Snipe Fang, and Hale's not going to be too happy about this. I mean, the Cross Switcher and the Canceling Cologne what choice do you go for at this position? Both cards are solid. I feel like it has to be the Canceling Cologne. Like, if you make an educated guess on your opponent's 60-card deck list, there's not a lot of good single prize Water-type Pokemon available at the moment. However, chooses the Lost Vacuum. Very interesting choice. Now, the Vacuum being in hand is actually really good here for Joseph. Can get rid of the Defiance Vest that just came down. And now the question is, can you get yourself to a position to... Take a knockout here. Now, you can't attack next turn because of Hydro Break being used, so it's actually just going to be a pass and deciding to bench the Chien Pao EX. But more importantly, not playing the other Lost Vacuum, therefore, the, the Vest remains in play. If you had yeah. played it down, then you get to threaten with the potential knockout with Palkia V-Star. 
And now that card's most likely just going to be discarded again off yeah. of this second Snipe Fang. So a free turn here, quick search being used, can find any card out of the deck. And this is why Pidgeot, when it was released, lots of people had their eyes on this. And decks like Charizard, but it has found its home here in Control being able to find these specific one of pieces, all these different texts. I mean, this list I'm looking at right now, it's just filled with ones and ones and ones on this screen. One copy of stuff like Boss's Orders, Cheryl to heal things up. They're all these different one of supporters that you can justify playing in this deck because you have a card that searches out any one specific card from your deck. Yeah, Pidgeot is that powerful and you combine it with a lot of these controlling sort of cards and that's definitely going to be really, really good. Now, I'm really wondering, though, I, I, like, I, your I, opponent just favored discarding the Lost Vacuum. You have to figure they're going to choose the Lost Vacuum yet again. So that Defiance best, I really would have liked to see that hit the loss of the previous turn. Grabbing the Super Rod right away. Understands that Mimikyu is probably the MVP in this card. Very clearly not going for the block lack strategy. We'll just use this Luxray to get rid of as many pieces as possible. And from there... In the queue, you can maybe start to put on some pressure in terms of just sitting there with Safeguard. As it's actually going to be the V-Guard energy attached. So now this Luxray taking 70 less damage, and it's just going to be the other Lost Vacuum. So like you said, would have liked to see that just get played the previous turn. Now, a different card obviously would have been discarded off of that Snipe Fang, but it would be at the cost of removing Defiance Vest for the rest of the game. Super important that it's being Lost Zone 2. Silene can't even bring it back. Indeed. Now... Ultra Ball was top deck, so now we do have access to Palkia V-Star. However, Palkia V-Star is right now a worse attacker than Palkia V. Palkia V-Star can do up to 120 damage, I believe, mm. right now. But then you have both the Defiance Vest and the V-Card energy reducing 70 damage. So 200 damage from Hydro Break is actually more powerful at this point in time. Now, I am wondering, though, what is Joseph planning with this Chien Pao. It's not a very efficient attacker. It requires you to continually power it up with energies, gets rid of energies from the field. So what is happening with that Chien Pao? I don't know what Joseph is planning right here. Maybe a boss KO on the Pidgeot? That could be the plan. Well, we'll see how things develop. It's going to be another quick search. We'll be saying this lots and lots. Hale's sort of playing to this condition where he wants to set this board up, right? He wants to get all these pieces, and then from there, establish the lock. It's not quite, or rather, establish the loop to make sure to not deck out. It's not quite there yet, right? Joseph has not exhausted very many resources. There's very few cards been played. No Irida yet, or just the one copy of Melanie so far. And here we go. It's just going to be the Penny picking it up, bringing Pidgeot up. And I'm really seeing now how this zero retreat cost has tons of utility in this deck. Yeah, Zero Retreat Cost gives you all the maneuverability you would like. Now, Chen Bao is a threat, but you got to wonder how many energy... I'm sure, like, the questions running through Hale's minds is, how many energies does Joseph play? Does he play any ways to recover the energies outside of the Palkia V-Star v -star ability? We're going to see another Fang Snipe. This was not in my predictions, Ethan. Not at all. Getting rid of the canceling cologne, I think it's smart to finally get rid of that resource. And I mean, yeah, I, my thing again is just how do you stop Mimikyu how, from just sitting there and, and taking over the game? It's just even with Star Portal, you just, I guess you can over time maybe put enough energy, but the more energy gets attached to this GM pal, the less of a possibility that becomes. Exactly. So, and even if you knock out the pitcher, right? That. That's two prizes. How do you get the extra three prizes? And the big question that I keep asking, how do you deal with Mimikyu? I, I just don't see an answer. And now that the canceling cologne has been discarded, how do you deal with it? You have Greninja, but then you discard energies. And if that gets recovered, there's no out. And this Spirit Tomb, I mean, on paper, yes, it was good early on, but... With this Ultra Ball, you could have maybe found something like Luminion V, but you can't play that down now. The Spirit Tomb, sitting there, originally had a great purpose in shutting Rotom down, but now it's only hurting Joseph. Indeed. Now, Joseph having no way to shuffle Hale's hand at all other than the Roxanne. But, of course, Hale... I mean, honestly, it's looking more likely that Hale wins by prizes at this point after <laughs> controlling 
the setup and Joseph continuing to not evolve knowing that the Hydro Break is going to be a bigger pressure in terms of damage than the sub space well since Hale is definitely keeping his bench low and Joseph has simply not found any other basic Pokemon really. Sort of a free turn here for Hale, no damage to move off the board, no reason to play something like Penny if needed and we see the Misfortune Sisters already in hand. We'll use Quick Search first just to Check out the deck. There is also things like Palpad. It will just be another double Turbo Energy brought to the hand. Now, there is nothing like a Psychic Energy, so this Mimikyu can never attack and put pressure on. What could this double Turbo be sig signaling here, Pablo? Could be used uh, for Pidgeot to pressure. Um, could be as backup. I mean, honestly, Hale can just do whatever he wants at this point. He's not really threatened by Ooh. any sort of damage, and wow, hitting two switching effects, switch and cross switcher, and very interestingly, keeping the battle VIP pass, not choosing to discard that, meaning Joseph can top deck that completely useless card. Yeah, the condition is deck out, right? That's how this game is going to be won, but Hale understands that at that point, if you have one extra card, that's one extra turn of me just draw passing, right? It's just not worth giving you an out if you're able to find a line to play in this game. So, smart choice by Hale. Would expect nothing less from him. Are we just going to be seeing another Snipe Fang this turn? And that's just going to be what it is. And it's like a pretty easy choice. Just get rid of the... I mean, actually, I don't even think you need to get rid of the Cross Switcher at this point. You kind of just can get rid of the Ordinary Rod because your opponent's going to have one use of this Cross Switcher. Now, sure, by discarding it, it means that if they top deck another Cross Switcher, they can't play it, but... I think the Rod is just fine to go, and that's going to be the choice. Yeah, Rod helps replenish the deck, and honestly, I, I don't pretend to be inside of either player's minds, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking Hale will get this game to a point where Joseph just can never threaten with uh, anything like super uh, powerful. That Mimikyu will just stay in the active, and it's going to be Hale's job to make sure that he doesn't deck himself out, cycling Silene, cycling Palpat, cycling... Uh, team Yields cheer, whereas Joseph might be counting on having enough cards left before Hale accomplishes that in order to maybe with a string of unlucky tail slip on Silene for Hale, he ends up decking Hale out. Action back over on Hale. Double Penny coming back to the deck, and that can just be quick search right away. Super powerful synergy between that. Usually you play the pal pad, then you have to use Rotom hope to, to draw, draw through yeah. and hope to draw it, and that's Pidgeot EX for you. Quick search every turn. Find your piece out. We're going to keep seeing things going on. Of course, other top eight matches are happening right now between things. Penny picking this Pokemon up. I think we're just going to be seeing yet another Snipe Fang. Bravery Charm, Double Turbo Energy. We even see something like Cheryl in this deck, which means, I mean, of course, you can't heal your basic Pokemon, but down the line, even Pidgeot could come up and take a hit and then be healed that way too. Now, when Quick Search came out, did you ever expect it? to be used in this way. I had some ideas about control decks that could work. Now, by the time Pidgeot EX came out, there were lots of pieces available, but the issue with control has always been it has so many bases it needs to cover for, right? It has decks with lots of pivoting options, one prize decks. It has decks that can put on aggression really fast, but it seems like Hale has built this deck extremely well to deal with the major threats. I've kind of been running my head through during this game and saying, yeah, what could beat it? I guess Garatina is probably the hardest thing because it does do all of those things like I mentioned. Yeah. But this is no Garatina right here in front of you. This is Origin for Palkia V-Star. And while it is aggressive, it doesn't have the coverage necessary to potentially deal the big damage to Luxray or take down the Mimikyu. Usually, having one of those win conditions is enough for you to win a set. But two, that's really hard to overcome. All right, now we are going to see the Penny. I feel like Hale has seen... Uh, Joseph's hand plenty of times. There's two cards left in the hand, mm -hmm. so I don't expect we're going to see a Luxury, and we're finally going to see the Mimikyu. And this Pokemon can deal with Mimikyu. This Pokemon can deal with Mimikyu. There's only Radiant Greninja, and the canceling Cologne has already been discarded. So how? How do you get out of this spot as Joseph? The million-dollar question. Well, that's one way. Ooh, Escape Rope being played. Now, I think it's pretty clear... You just let this Luxray go down. Now, you can't let your Pidgeot go down. It's just too valuable of a resource. And honestly, with the Luxray going up here, so it has 260 HP, your opponent has to get rid of five water energy to take it down. 
and they still have to take three more prizes and get through your Mimikyu. Yeah, now bear in mind we still have the V-Star ability, right, to replenish, but then your number one goal is how do you get this Chien Pao back? There's one switch gone, there's a couple of cross switchers gone, the escape rope is gone. Retreating that and maybe you do that once more, right? How do you do it after a constant barrage of counter catchers? Big question, Pablo. But for now, it's going to be a five energy hail blade, 300 damage, taking the knockout on Luxray. Joseph finally putting on some more aggression. He's halfway there, but this final half is going to be a tough hill to climb. Indeed. Now, hail just top decks Stormy Mountains. And yeah, as we see how this game develops, Stormy Mountains is a very unique card. It's not what you would expect in a sort of control deck, but helps you find both Rotom and Luxray V, so pretty cool inclusion by Hail there. I feel like this Snorlax is like the evolved Snorlax, right? <laughs> the other version of Snorlax is pretty basic. You have four Snorlax, you have your Rotom, you draw a lot of cards, you have Mimikyu as well, and you try to disrupt. But this control version, including Pidgeot and that very powerful Quick Search ability, is just amazing to see in action. Quick Search will grab that second Snorlax, putting it into the hand. Are we going to see a shift in strategy? First it was Snipe Fang. Now, could it possibly be a transition over to blocking the active with Snorlax? We do see the Snorlax come down. This can retreat. And it's actually just going to be the Mimikyu coming into the active. Of course, that safeguard ability we've known through time and time again. Suicune, Sigilyph, you name it. It's been great at shutting out these multi-prize Pokemon as a double heads off Silene can bring back this Palpad and another card of Hale's choice. That Silene is definitely what Hale needs here to make sure that he never decks before Joseph and even has the fortune of getting back Misfortune Sisters and making sure that he can continue to attack Joseph resources in the deck. Now as Mimikyu sits here, Passing back and forth. Just want to give some quick updates on our other top eight matches. Azul up 1-0 over Nick. Grant Hayes playing Garatina 1-0 over the other control deck, Cal Connor. And Grant Manley winning game one over Dan Hugar. So both Charizard players going up a game in this set. And the other lax on the completely, it seems, opposite side of things. Down a game, down against the wall. Hale is doing exactly what he wants here, finding two cards off of this Misfortune Sisters. It is another one of those switch. The Urn of Vitality, or rather the Earthen Vessel, is a good card. It can find those energies out. It's definitely a little bit more playable than Battle Pass, so Hale understands, yeah, I've got to deck you out eventually, so I might as well get rid of these cards. Indeed, and now this Chien Pao, it, of course, it unlocked a one KO on the very annoying Luxray. Was it a little too late, though? Would have been nicer to perhaps knock out the Pidgeot, but does Joseph have enough resources to get this Chen Pao out of the active? Right now, he can retreat, right? But at a very costly cost. <laughs> Top deck was for turn an escape rope. Now, this is a really minor play, but I would have actually liked to see the escape rope played before the Mew was benched. That way, you kind of put your opponent in a situation. If they bring Snorlax up, the damage from subspace well isn't quite there yet, so you'd have to bench another Pokemon. However... At this point, it seems the hail is just okay, letting the Snorlax go down. Just now. gonna take the knockout, and Heavy Ball will also be played. This can find the Calyrex if Joseph wants to, but I mean, Ice Rider just isn't a great attacker when your opponent's limiting their bench. That Ride of the High King is only gonna be doing 70 to maybe max 100 damage. Now, let me play Devil's Advocate a little bit here on why benching the Mew is a pretty big deal, because then if Hail ends up promoting this pitch at EX, Palkia V-Star could have, you could have promoted the Mew EX, retreat into the Chien Pao, mm. right? Power it up, and then you can one hit KO the pitch at EX. How do you take that last prize card on the Mimikyu? That's a whole other question, sure. but that could have been um, a way for Joseph to perhaps close out this game. I feel like that's a way that you can sort of, I don't know if bait is the right word, but you can maybe force your opponent to maybe get greedy, right? Go after those yeah. prize cards and do that. I would have actually been okay to see that be the line, right? Just kind of let your opponent go for that play. Yeah, sure, you can take my Pidgeot out, but I'm just going to sit here with Mimikyu and pass. So Joseph is two prizes away. Now, 
the thing to note, with the V-Star power not being used yet, and this Pidgeot EX, there's no way to remove Pidgeot out of play. So Joseph may have actually found a way to navigate through this. With the V-Star power, if there's a switching card and a boss's orders, yeah, exactly. that can take a knockout on the Pidgeot. So my main question here is, that Snorlax bench, it, it really didn't seem too inco inconsequential a few turns ago, but that extra prize being taken changes everything in this game. Yeah, and I think now we need to see Snorlax yet again, and Mew might be the Pokemon that needs to be trapped in the active. Mew doesn't threaten uh, any attack, really. It requires three manual energy attachments mm -hmm. because Star Portal can only attach water energies to a water-type Pokemon. So trapping this Mew EX with Countercatcher and with Snorlax is probably what Hale needs to do at this point in time. It will be the Stormy Mountains. That's a card I haven't seen in a <laughs> while get played down. It feels like we're all the way back at the EU regulation evolving skies. As Luxray is actually going to be the choice to come down, could this signal another Snipe Fang potentially? You could still bring up this... No, you can't though, because if you bring the Chien Pao up, then you just star portal the energies onto it, and no matter what stands in its way, it doesn't matter if you have Defiance Vest, V-Guard, that Pokemon is going down. Yeah, with this Bravery Charm, does require... One, six energies? No, five, five energy will get there. Five will be 300, so. Now, the issue here, though, is you can't retreat and use the attack because it's going to be only max four, right? You can find one yep. energy out of the deck, so. Um, but you can pressure, though. Yeah. You can pressure with Palkia. That's a solid amount of damage. Absolutely. Our first update from top eight, Grant Hayes wins 2-0 over Calvin Cotter, advancing to top four taking down a stall deck in its path. Things have developed here. I mean, this has been a long game so far, but ladies and gentlemen, you guys voted for this. You guys knew, knew what you were <laughs> up for as you selected a game. Quick search being used, grabbing any card out of the deck. For Hale, you've got a few threats to think about. I feel like Penny's got to be number one on your list. Now, Hale, by using that Snipe Fang, yes, it did get rid of that Earthen Vessel, not too relevant of a trainer, but he got hand information. He now knows every card in Joseph's hand except for that top deck, and if it was a card played to win the game, Joseph would have just played that card to take the game down. Now, it does feel like Joseph is so close, right? He must have a plan. I, there must be something uh, we're missing here because there has to be a combination of cards that allows Joseph to win. Could be as simple as cross switcher plus boss, and Hale definitely cannot risk going for the Luxray anymore because that could lead to him getting KO'd. Joseph takes the last two prizes. Sianirida, is there something that helps Hale? I guess, I believe there's two cross switchers available. So if yeah. Joseph eventually top decks one, double cross switcher into the Pidgeot, star portal, KO with Chen Pao, is the line? To win. I actually like this play of Joseph just holding the Irida in hand. Yes, there's the risk for it to get snipe fanged and knocked out, but if you find one of those pieces, like one of those cross switcher off the top of the deck, like one of those escape rope or switch cards, for example, you can find a way to just grab the other piece with Irida and close this game out. So I think Joseph's just going to kind of play this bluff game of, yeah, you don't need to snipe fang me. You saw my hand. Nothing's going on here. I'm not plotting anything. But it really will come down to that Pidgeot EX. Yes, it's been great at searching Hale out all of these support Pokemon, but will it be his downfall in this game? Being those two prizes, 280 HP, can Joseph put together the math to take a knockout on this Pokemon? I feel like the downfall might have been that Snorlax that got benched, right? If it was yeah. just Mimikyu on the bench, if it was just, or, I mean, even a couple of Mimikyus, uh, which no Snorlax deck has been playing. Maybe double Mimikyu is a way forward for Snorlax eventually, but we're going to see Peonia get grabbed. So Hale needing to access something from the prize cards that he prized previously. This is very interesting, yeah. right? You choose some cards in the beginning to prize yourself, right? That's a dream, right? You choosing which cards to prize. But now seems like he will need to unlock something from there. Sort of pausing a little bit, thinking maybe kind of just thinking about what, or it looks like having a discussion with one of the judges, so we're making sure everything is set and good, as it will be the Peonia. So i would be really interested to see what prizes are being grabbed, what prizes are being put back into the deck, or rather into the hand. It is going to be the oh. Erica, Double Turbo Energy, and, and Countercatcher. Counter -catcher. So 
what is Hale, this signal? Hale must have known which prizes he was grabbing. Yeah, right? absolutely. He's got full information of all six. Yeah. So could Hale just go for a knockout on the Palkia V-Star with two attacks of Pidgeot, maybe? Is that ever the plan? It's so risky, though, because if you bring Pidgeot up, all your opponent needs to do is... I mean, the, the problem at this point is it's not open lists, right? So Hale doesn't know how many Switch Joseph has played. Now, two have been discarded already, but, I mean, it could totally be reasonable to see more than that. Hold on, though. Is just going to attack with this Pidgeot, keep the stadium in play. Now, Joseph is playing how many Switch? Oh, there's only two Switch in the deck. I believe both have been discarded. Now, is there a way for... I'm trying to think you can... No, if there was a Melanie, potentially, you could Melanie retreat and then... Attach for turn, star portal, and then that yep. would get you there. Would... Melody oh, top deck! Is that it? Is that what you need to do? Uh, I think it's guaranteed, because you can retreat and you and can to Chen Pao. Pao search for the energies. What a, what a no card. Way. Are I there was... energies left? Wow. I believe the map is there. Hasn't used star portal yet, but Chien Pao can search this energy out. I think Joseph's double just going to double check. Yep. Double check on the energy. Play the Ultra Ball. Is there an energy in the deck? I think that's it. No! no energy left There's in the no. deck. Well, are there any left prized? Can we there see the prizes? Be. I there think there must be one energy in the prize cards. I think the last energy might be in the. So it close. is. It is the eighth energy oh. is in the prize cards. What a top deck! What a like hype into <laughs> deflating moment. It was so close, the perfect top deck for Joseph, but because that last energy is prized, will be one energy short of taking this knockout. And not only that, but this Palky of V-Star is under immense pressure. Next turn can potentially go down to a variety of attacks. I mean, right now it has close to enough damage to be knocked out. Unless we're, we're missing I, some math here. I, I, hold on. I, no, there's not no, because of yeah. the last energy. It's four. There, so I think Joseph considered retreating, but just attacking into a Pidgeot means that by benching that other Palkia, if Hale takes a knockout on the Palkia V-Star, then you just start Portal and win the game, right? So Hale needs now to find a way to potentially heal this Pidgeot. But wow, that energy being at the very top of the prize cards, just wow. Yeah, that could have been game one sealed for Joseph with that incredible top deck as we see the Cheryl heal off the Pidgeot. Three energies gone for Joseph. That's going to be a heartbreaking moment. And a complete 180 Shh. was one piece away for Joseph to win this game. And now is in almost a terrible spot at this point. I mean, yes, the Mew can come up. Yes, you still have access to Palkia V-Star. Oh, wait. Are the pieces here? No, Need to, it's still needs back not. Back-to-back -back Melanies, though. Back-to-back yeah. -back Melanies into the Star Portal, into attacking the Pidgeot. So that's why I sort of wonder in that position if it was just better to retreat into something yeah, like the Chien maybe. Pao Conserve and just that energy because he did yes. top deck the Melanie yet again. It would be there. The pieces would be there if he didn't just sacrifice the three energy to go down as Ultra Ball will be played. Now let's see what resources are available. Both Cross Switcher are still in the deck and there is one more copy of Melody. Suicune V could potentially get grabbed. Now I don't hate Suicune. You get to just fleet foot it every turn and draw an extra card especially if your condition is to play something else. Now, it will actually be the Lumineon. Now, Luminous Sign can't be used because, uh, of course, the Spiritomb V, Feathered in Misfortune, is blocking it. But Indeed. Oh, so I, and I guess the, Fe the Feathered in Misfortune also blocks Fleet-Footed, so you can't use that either, even if you wanted to. All right. I think Joseph actually has the perfect combination of cards to win this game. Eventually, he will draw a Melanie, which cannot be affected, right, by... Sure the Misfortune Sisters. And eventually he will have access to boss disorder. So as long as the Chien Pao is in the active spot, he can go Melanie onto the Palkia, start Portal onto the Chien Pao EX, and then the turn after, boss disorders knock out the Pidgey DX. Probably not start Portal preemptively, but whenever Joseph finds a Melanie, all he will need is boss's orders to mm. win this game. And there's no threat of being trapped with like the Mew or perhaps even the Spiritum. However, um, if Hale gets a read on this, right? If Hale gets a read that Joseph is missing a water energy and doesn't have any available, Star Porter or Melanie cannot attach to the Spiritum. That's true. 
could also just block the Mew up. But, I mean, the biggest issue here is that Joseph still has two Cross Switcher in deck. So exactly. the Cross Switcher yeah. can still switch the Spirit yeah, out of the or, active. True, true, true. Yeah. And if the Mew is active, right, you can go boss on the Pidgeot, and now it's not blocked, right? Yes. You can retreat, so... The cross switcher being there is the main thing, right? If it was just boss left in the deck, then yes, absolutely, the spirit tune can get blocked. But that switching effect uh, to switch your own active out is still a big deal. Seems like Joseph definitely had this match like pretty under control, yeah. right? For the most part. Now Joseph does have two Iridas. I wonder if he's choosing not to play Irida to make sure that he doesn't um, he doesn't have the cross switcher in hand, and then that gets taken away by a Lux Ray. I thought we were going to see Pidgeot attack there to just put pressure on this Palkia to just get that energy out of play. Oh. No, 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 stop, stop, stop. Oh, my. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was a close call. That was definitely a close call. Oh, I think. Is that Joseph? a big deal now for putting that Lumini? I mean, okay, so you can technically it, Star it, Portal onto okay. it. Joseph, can't. Does the Defiance best stop damage from rule box or from any Pokemon? I think it's all. Po it's just forty. It's right. 40 so, damage so we there. can't start. We can't Melanie retreat Star Portal onto Greninja no. to win the game, right? No. By knocking out Mowile and um, Mimikyu. Yeah, it's forty from everything. Thank so you. Thank you. For yeah. Me. All right. So that little minion, uh, yeah, it could be pro. I mean, even the Mimikyu could get trapped at this point, right? But sure. Luminion is definitely an easier. Like, hey, this Pokemon can definitely be problematic. This is the issue, though. If Misfortune Sister hits these Cross Witcher, double Cross Witcher hit off the Misfortune Sisters, a perfect two cards to discard it. Yeah. Oh, it's just going to get rid of the one. This is actually yeah. a smart play. There, there's three left. There's three in the discard, right? So you don't need to discard that fourth because now it's That's as it. good as a Battle of the IP Pass. And Joseph recognizes that that was his win condition. And Hail over Nolte wins game one in a very... Very interesting game one. That was so, that was as back and forth I think a control matchup can be, right? Just that one energy card short with the top deck Melanie, but it was in those final two prize cards and geez, I mean, at least for your mental, right? You're so close to winning that game. Your card is prized, you're now down 1-0 in top eight. Pablo, as you're going to this game, what do you have to tell yourself to keep yourself focused? In a crucial match, you're down a lot of time. What's going through your head? I mean, clearly Joseph has a plan against Norlax. Clearly Joseph knows what he's trying to do, and therefore he just needs to do it again, right? Just as long as he has access to that energy that remained in the prize cards the whole game. If he had that energy, he would have won three turns ago, right? So if you can do that again, then what happens? You go into a game three, and as long as you take a prize card, you are going to win the overall top eight. That is one of the issues of playing control decks. And that Cheryl, though, that Cheryl was so, so key. A big key card, not one you'd expect when you're only playing one evolution Pokemon, but it acts as essentially a fifth penny sometimes. Just another way to heal your Pokemon up. And Mimikyu, it sat there menacingly, didn't need to really do anything or block things. Kind of just sat there in the active, doing what it does is the disguise. And that final cross which you're getting discarded was the nail in the coffin for Joseph. The Misfortune Sisters living up to their name being Joseph's misfortune this time around. And now a big card, the canceling cologne and an escape rope at the very top. Neither card favoring Joseph here because there are two very important resources from him to advance and get out of the lock and potentially deal with a Mimikyu. So Joseph will kick things off to start that Chien Pao. So we'll at least get some of those water energy into play, into the hands. And the Lux Ray V start as well over on Hale's side. Interesting that Joseph chose to go first, though. Really favoring. We saw that as well in his previous stream match. He really favors going first. Now, I got a, a look at Hale's hand. I don't believe there's anything very good. There is the Hisuian Heavy Ball, but there wasn't any Pokemon prize, was there? I believe a Pidgey was in the prize card, oh, so okay. at least you can grab the Pidgey out, but... Uh, Pidgey's not enough to win you the game here. Exactly, right? yeah. Snipe Fang can slow things down a little bit for sure, but it's going to be a little bit of an ask. There's Nothing no like one. Battle VIP Pass, though, because the deck's being shuffled here uh, after this uh, Shivery Chill. We'll see the Palkia come down. There's the energy attachment for turn. And it's just going to be a pass over. So, wow. That's a big top deck, though. Big Finds top deck for the Hale. Arvin and that. Allow Hale to get things rolling. Gets the peep at the prize cards. We'll be able to get the Pidgey out. There is one Peonia, but 
as long as you play the other one, it still access these prize cards. What a top deck for Hale. I mean, you had the PG to potentially survive, but you have four Arvins, you get that off the top. Now you're going to be able to... Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh my. Almost shuffle the prize cards. It's, it's good. The, the, the prizes deck. are at the bottom, so this yeah. will be this will be reversible. We also have pictures of the prize cards. We can pick the cards yeah. and set them aside. Don't, don't shuffle! Don't shuffle! Don't shuffle! Oh, oh! Did they put the prizes back? Yeah, yeah. They oh, put the prizes okay. back. They put okay. the prizes back, and we also have pictures of the prize cards. Sure, so we're worst good. case scenario, we take a look at the picture of the prize cards. We grab the cards, put yeah. them back. Now we do have some news from top eight here. Azul defeats Nick Robinson, Grant Manley defeats Dan Hugar, and Grant Hayes. So this is the match that we're waiting for to decide our top four. What a top four it's going to be regardless. A stacked top four here in San Antonio as we'll see Arvin get played. Now, Hale isn't playing anything like a copy of Battle of the IP passes. Just playing Nest Ball to get these Pokemon out into play. So we'll look to grab the Nest Ball and the Forest Seal Stone as well. Now we saw Rotom had great use on that first turn, but once Rotom comes in, or once the Spiritune comes into play, you're really not going to get the value you want. But Hale still says, look, my hand is pretty weak. I need to draw cards. Yes, Snipe Fang would be nice here to maybe get rid of some trainers, but that won't matter if you still have a strong enough start and can put on some pressure quickly. Rotom being very key. You do have to decide whether you disrupt or draw. I feel like draw is the way to go here for sure. You need that Pidgeot. Once you have Pidgeot set up, you're fully under control. But before that, it can be a little dicey. So Bravery Charm coming down yet again onto the Pidgey. Really values just not losing that piece in the second turn. As it will just be an instant charge from the Rotom. This action back on Joseph. Now, there is a two prize Pokemon staring this down in the active spot, but I don't really necessarily know if you need to go super aggressive right now. Just going to fill the hand up with a bunch of energy cards. Second one being attached for turn. I mean, listen, as long as you just attach once every turn and just build this up, Hale's not playing any way to discard energy cards, uh, rather basic energy cards, off of Joseph's side. So we saw how that patient waiting game played out well for Joseph in game one, pending those prize cards. Now, there is a Melanie in the hand, so I feel like you could potentially discard one, deal 60 damage, and that will allow you to Melanie next turn. I think there's a little merit to uh, that. The 60 damage also makes it a kinder knockout for Palkia V-Star, but looks like we're debating playing the Luminion probably for an Irida or the boss disorders, just aggressively targeting the Pidgey to deny the Pidgeot. So this will require one more energy to be discarded thanks to that Bravery Charm. But it's a small price to ask for when you're slowing this engine down. Now, I think this in combination with a Spiritual yeah, coming down would have, been, the dream would for have sure. been excellent. But one piece short means that Rotom will still be able to instant charge away next turn. There isn't really much going on in this hand now. There is a Boss's Orders, Misfortune Sisters, Snorlax the top deck for turn. Could be arguing going after this Luminion on the bench. Bringing that up, maybe disrupting the hand a little bit, but I don't know if you can necessarily afford to disrupt when your hand is just not where you want it to be in terms of size. It will be the boss's orders, choosing what to bring up off of the bench. I feel like if you're trying to slow things down, it oh, might be Luminion, yeah. but it is actually going to be the Palkia, so not even going to use instant charge with sort of how little in cards this is. It's just going to be the Snipe Fang does have the option to get rid of either the Melanie or the Cross Switcher, or rather... Yeah, the Melanie Cross Switcher, Riven Vessel really isn't on the table. I feel like Cross Switcher is probably your best bet at this point. Yeah, Toss choose the Cross Switcher. I don't know though, I really fancied the Melanie because then, I mean, it's almost like denying a research right now. Yeah. Joseph gets to draw extra cards. If Joseph is able to establish the Spirit Tomb whilst applying pressure on the active Pokemon, that could be really, really powerful. However, no Palkia V-Star in sight. No, there is one in the hand. Oh, there, there is, is, there is. It's I get tricked the, by the... <laughs> yeah, the golden Palkia V-Star. <laughs> Definitely not what I expect to see. A grand parade for a grand Pokemon. And the question here, do you you've got to just... Do you commit? Now, the way I see it is if it's a two-hit knockout regardless, you might as well just evolve and put it into play now. More Pokemon can get benched, especially if you're... The Luminion technically can't get locked because you can always uh, 
you can always use Aqua Return and get it out of play, but it's just going to be 120 damage onto this Luxray. Things like Defiance Vest are now available, so that can stop the math from taking knockouts. There's an Arvin top, top deck for turn. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That Arvin top deck could fetch that Defiance Vest, as you mentioned. Now, Joseph does have the possibility to bench that Suikun, has Irida as well to search for other Pokemon, so can still get this KO. And I wonder if Hill would have had a better like a better time of just using Rotom instead of trying to disrupt. I feel like Hill is against the ropes. You wanna you have time to disrupt when you are in control of what you what resources you have access to each turn. And this is not the case right now with no pigeon in sight. And the problem is if you want to snipe Fang again, it's not the other turn of you not using Rotom, which is one more turn for Joseph to now get down Spirit Tomb into play and shut that off as an option. And it will mean that Hale will have to commit a supporter one turn to getting Rotom V out of play. What a game we are seeing. Like, I know in terms of action, uh, Pokemon knocking out each other, it's not, um, there's not a lot going on, but so many mind games, so much decisions, and I really like this Mimikyu by Hale. I think that's one way that he will be able to really stop Joseph, especially after discarding this cross switcher right here. And the boss's orders also being gone. How many times can Joseph deal with this Mimikyu? And unfortunately for Joseph, that canceling cologne is at the very top of the deck. Now the Defiance Vest is played down. I hope Joseph learned his lesson from game one and just plays this lost vacuum. It's just so worth it to get rid of this Defiance Vest out of play. But it looks like is instead gonna use that card just to discard with the Earthen Vessel. I feel like just getting that option of out of play means Penny can't pick it up and put it back in. It's just going to be grabbing the two water energy out of the deck with Earthen Vessel. Slowly building this board up. Now, one thing to note, though, hold on. If there is something like a uh, Lost Vacuum, which we know there is, and a Radiant Greninja, both we of those cards in combination three. can take a three prize knockout on the Mimikyu and the Luxray. But Joseph isn't going to go for that, just going to pass the turn over. Indeed. So Joseph being very patient with his plans, has a lost vacuum, Did does have a Nirida, I believe, in hand. So that could have been a way to search for the Greninja. I'm not entirely sure. But we're going to see the Forest Seal Stone, which is pigeon for one turn, essentially. Sure. <laughs> so what was the card pick? Did you get to see it? That was so fast. It was, it's like he knew exactly what he wanted <laughs> it, to grab it's before using like the force. He's already seal planning stone. what he's trying to do during his turn. I think maybe the the reason for Joseph not playing the ear to that turn is assuming the board stays the same. Next turn with one more energy attachment, escape rope means that you can essentially knock out whatever Pokemon comes up in the active. But Pidgey coming down into play and the Penny picking up this Luxray off of the board. Looks like there actually is no Irida no in the hand Irida. for Joseph, so I must that isn't have an option. It. <laughs> and putting the Snorlax into play again, a card that almost costed Hail that first game, and it's just going to be an instant charge and a top deck Spirit Tomb for turn. Rotom is offline, no more power connected to it. As the energy is put onto Chien Pao, it's just going to be passing back and forth. Now, look how powerful this Mimikyu is, but now we're going to see the Pidgeot EX finally hit play Hail. Did take a risk there. Both of these Pokemon were at risk of getting sniped by Radiant Greninja last turn, as you were mentioning. Maybe that's why Joseph had could have held on to that play, but of course, mm. one Irida away, one Nespel away from actually pulling that off. And now, Hale looks to be in commanding position in this game. Only one prize down. No answers for the Mimikyu inside. Joseph has only drawn past after attaching a turn. How do you get out of this spot? It's tough. Can use the supporter card to pick up Rotom. As soon as Spirit Tomb comes down, Rotom is out of play. Puts the Bravery Charm on Snorlax, and here we go. Passing to start things off. Does top deck the One Irida. turn too late. Yeah. One turn too late. That's so heartbreaking for Joseph. I feel like he's been on the rougher end of things in terms of locks. That energy being prized that cost him game one. Irida, one turn too late. It's tough. I'm not sure you even played the Irida in this spot until maybe you can find Devil Cross Witcher and go after this uh, Pidgeot, but just going to play the Irida right now. I mean, this can grab something like the Switch, like the Escape Rope to bring up one of these bench Pokemon, but it is actually going to be the Radiant Greninja 
bring, brought up to the top. That, that is a Pokemon that is probably going to be the most helpful water Pokemon in your deck to get through this Mimikyu, to give yourself the options. But yeah, that turn before would have had so much value getting rid of the Quick Search from being online the following turn. That would have been so huge, but now it's too late. That humongous 280 HP can really only be dealt with by Chen Pao, and that, that's such a high cost. Now, we are going to see the Escape Robe. We are going to see the Radiant Greninja, so something is either getting knocked out, aka the Snorlax, or the Pidgeot will be damaged. I wonder what Pokemon Kale will bring up if this Escape Robe gets played. I feel like it's got to be the Snorlax. There's five energy on board, right, with this Chen Pao. You can't really risk your opponent just taking that threat that you built up, took so much time to build it. And the biggest risk, too, is any turn you play Pidgey down is the turn that it can be targeted, essentially, right? It can be targeted around block, it can be targeted be a cross switcher. Uh, now, if there is going to be a rope played, I would like to see the rope played first just yep. to see what the options look like. But uh, it's actually going to be a retreat okay. into this Greninja. And here we go. Finally finding an answer to deal with this Mimikyu. Star Portal, V-Star Power, used for Joseph. Three water energy onto this Radiant Greninja. And it's going to be the 90 damage to this Mimikyu and the 90 to this Pidgeot. A solid play that puts it in range for the following turn to be knocked out. Indeed, now. Still, canceling Kelowna Escape Rope at the very top of the prize cards, so... If that Mimikyu, yep, eventually gets super audited, eventually gets Team Yells cheered, and now you can just quick search for it, dealing with one Mimikyu is feasible. Yeah. How do you deal with two? You need to repower up the Radiant Greninja, but you already exhausted your V-Star ability, you need to manually attach, and then you get to discard two energies once more. You play a total of eight. I don't think you have enough energies to pull this off. Yeah, especially if you can put back something like a Bravery Charm on it, now that you've played the Lost Vacuums. I mean, let's do the math here, right? We're going to look through the discard pile. There's two in the discard pile. There's four, four in play. In play. That two leaves left two over. left. Now you can use Moonlight Shuriken one more time, but what happens if you play a Silene, for example? Yeah. Flip heads, and now your Mimikyu goes back on top of your deck. Yeah, Team Gels cheer. Just put back the Mimikyu. No need to wait. Now we do see Cross Switcher. I feel like you always just get rid of the Cross Switcher. And yeah, Switch is another great card. Both of those hitting the discard pile. There's been a lot of luck on Hale's side when it comes to Misfortune Sisters. Those Misfortune Sisters have definitely been more fortunate for one player than the other. And it's Mimikyu time, yeah? I feel like this is definitely something Hale could have maybe tried a little bit more in the previous game. He kept doing all these like fancy control things, but Ask your opponent, how do you deal with multiple Mimikyus? Now, both water energy are in hand. The risk is, I mean, I guess you have Melanie to accelerate energy into play, right? So bringing up the Palkia doesn't really matter. It can eventually attack if you play enough Melanie. It's just going to be the manual attachment and the pass over. Quick Search can be used. Hale, I think, has a plan to be able to be fine with one more of these Moonlight Shurikens in play if he can just put another Pokemon in even use block to trap this Snorlax, or rather to trap this Greninja if there's enough switching cards exhausted over on Joseph's side. Indeed, you can easily trap the Greninja. And uh, now that this seventh energy has been committed, you can even trap the Luminion, right? Because, well, I guess you can Melanie onto it. Yeah. And that actually would be problematic. So never mind. You don't want to see that Luminion come up to the active spot. So Hale grabbing another card off Quick Search. This Pidgeot is definitely pulling its weight in Hale's top eight match. Just over 23 minutes left on the clock. So like you said, it's now or never for Joseph. Finish this game out, get the win, force a game three, or struggle trying. 23 minutes left on the clock. It definitely feels like Joseph needs to make something happen very quickly here. Hale playing the counter catcher, bring up the Palkia V-Star, knows that Joseph has committed a lot of energies to the field, one in the discard pile. Five in play, one in hand, so one left over, and Mel oh, two in the discard pile, sorry. So one energy total left over. Joseph needs to find a Melanie very soon, and then he'll be able to retreat. And that's it, because that Mimikyu is a big problem for this deck, and for many decks, really. Safeguard is strong. No one's surprised about that. It's a strong ability. We saw Miltank C play with it before. We saw... Pokemon over Pokemon over Pokemon use it. I mean, 
Uh, my worst memory with Safeguard has got to be Hoopa, the Shining Legends <laughs> yeah. Hoopa. And that, yep. just as I was starting to really get back into things, that was a card that, that walled out. Do you have a favorite Safeguard Pokemon that you've used? So I've always been a big fan of the Suicune. Okay. I, I really liked the Suicune back then. Um, but I was also a big fan of the Hoopa, and I, I feel like there was a Hoopa Umbreon deck that was very, very underrated. You could aggressively target down the single price Pokemon that could deal with Hoopa, and you just promote the Hoopa, and even the Hoopa could attack. So aggro Hoopa was actually a thing. Never knew 80 damage for three could be so good. Now at the present, though, we are here at a crucial turn. There it is. 90 damage on the Mimikyu, taking the knockout. Joseph going down to just two prize cards left. But the big question, is there are three prize cards left, excuse me, is there enough gas in the tank for Hale? Especially with the Storlax in the active spot, if Joseph doesn't have any more switching cards left, we do know that Escape Rope is in the prize cards. We've seen a switch or two get discarded with the Misfortune Sister. Let's see if we can take a look here. I think one, one switch, switch, two and the, cross switchers, so. I think the Escape Rope that was grabbed off the Melody is still, or the Irida is actually still in the hand. We haven't seen it get played. It just got played. Oh, it just got played. Yeah, it so just to, got played. To put it back faster. in, yes, yeah. So. Yeah, so I think there is one switch left, but you need to combine that with like a couple of Melanies, or are you going to attack with Chien Pao, and then that requires you to get rid of all four energies to knock out the Snorlax, and then you're completely out of energies. How do you close out the game at that point? Tough predicament, but if anybody can do it, it's Joseph. Has piloted this deck excellently throughout this weekend. There is it's a super odd left. There, there is, is a super odd left for Joseph, so that could be a way you can recover. True. I mean, it might come down to the luck of the Misfortune Sisters, right? Misfortune Sisters, such a powerful card, and we are going to see perhaps a Silene or a Palpat get those cards back. I mean, Hale did get a good look at Joseph's deck the previous, uh, the previous game. Big right? flips here. Double tails! That's a big double tails. It means Mimikyu can't come back into the deck, and that's going to force Hale to put down another block Snorlax onto the bench to prevent against Scape Rope from winning the game. Now, did see a pass, but Judge is mentioning something to Hale right now, I believe. That's why we have a slight pause in the game. We'll have to find out and let you all know what is going on with the game. Oh, looks like we're good. All right, well, action's back over on Joseph's side. Oh, is it a, oh, maybe it was a pace of play warning. I'm not quite sure at this point. We are just going to see the switch grabbed off Irida. Oh, okay. We'll take a look. Yeah, so it looks like there was, so I'll get confirmation on this here. I believe the double prize penalty was given because of a pace of play. So because of that, Looks like there was one more piece of play issue, and it was a double prize card penalty, which means that Joseph had to just take one more prize card to win the game. And that's huge because we have 19 minutes left in this game three. Yeah, 19 minutes. And then how are we going to determine who ends up taking this match, right? If the game has not completed, it's whoever's up in prizes. So... Pace of play, very important to keep it up, right? It's important to think through your plays, but you also have to play at a very reasonable pace. That's so heartbreaking for Hale. You're pretty much close to locked up at that game. I mean, yes, the switch card still was there, but over time that can get milled with Misfortune Sisters. Wow, big game three coming up. The door just swung wide open for Joseph in this game three. Well, seems like Hale did will be going first in this game three. And now we have very little time on the clock. I don't think a deck out is in the cards for Hale here. And it's on Joseph. If Joseph is able to take a prize card or we might actually see Agro Pidget here. Wow, what? triple rare candy That's in the prize three. cards. No way. Okay. Hold on, I think we're gonna see a Hisui and Heavy Ball play first and Hale's gonna get the bad news. He's shaking his head like, come on, in the most crucial match of my tournament, all three rare candies are unavailable. As well. Wait, is there? There's no po okay, okay, there. Okay, hold on. Didn't think there were Pokemon yet. There is a Stormy Mountain, so this can find the Rotom V to get that going, but. I mean, e even if you get going, right? Even if you start controlling, eventually Joseph will take one prize card, whether it's Greninja knocking out Mimikyu in the active, 
whether it's knocking out a Snorlax or a Pidgeot, this is going to be very difficult for Hale to pull off. I think if you're Joseph, you're happy to just sort of play things out normally. You don't really need to play fast. It's take your prize card that you're pretty much given on one of these Pokemon eventually, and the last thing you want to do, right, is get ahead of yourself, right? Think fast, play to these routes, because if you do put yourself in a situation where you can truly get locked and make no more actions, that's when trouble starts, right? Draw pass, draw pass, draw pass, and those actions only take a couple seconds from there. You can quickly deck out. So we are just going to see rule the region, just get the collapse stadium out. The hand's really not, really not looking too solid for Joseph, but feels like, Pablo, that it's almost inevitable, just a matter of time. It's almost a matter of time, as you mentioned. Like, if your plan was to go aggro Pidgey X, how do you do that with no rare candies available? Yeah. That's going to be very problematic. We are going to see the Forest Seal Stone, maybe for the Peonia, after yeah. seeing those three rare candy in the prize cards. Now, there is a world where you play the Peonia, and the three prize cards that you don't take are all three rare candy. <laughs> we'll have to see what three prize cards get. That would just be. Oh, that would just. Be, I mean, that would make me sick to my stomach. There. Now, Joseph's hands is actually. Joseph's hand is actually not super great. There's no draw supporters. There's not a lot of resources. Not even a follow up energy at this point. It was. It was the three cards. I cursed. <laughs> it. <laughs> the caster curse. What? Look at that. The three rare candies no remain. No way. <laughs> None of them pick. Now Hale needs another Peonia to unlock any of those rare candies. How unlucky can you get? I'd like to formally apologize to <laughs> Hale and anybody <laughs> affected by this. That's so... I need somebody to run the math on that. That's so improbable for the three prize cards you don't take to all be rare candy. So how do you go about this at this point? You lock with Mimikyu. There's no access to PG. I mean... Hale's composure has not uh, has not faltered, right? Like, if you're Joseph, you have no idea that there's three rare candies in the prize cards at this point in time. And we do see the draw with the Rotom, Mimikyu in the active. Big top deck for Joseph, and Irida into the hand. Yeah, there's two Cross Switcher there as well. So if you really do want to, you can grab yourself another Water-type Pokemon, even something like the Chien Pao. I wouldn't even... I don't know if I would see that quite yet. I think Earthen Vessel is probably just a better card to grab since you get the water energies in play. You can slowly start building up this Palkia, and it's really a big risk to put Luxray down because Luxray is a Pokemon that doesn't have a lot of HP. Even with a Bravery Charm, 260, that's something that Palkia V-Star can possibly hit over time. That's something that I mean, GM Pal can possibly hit. I mean, I'm pretty sure Joseph can pull off the Radiant Greninja attack this turn. Can... Earthen Vessel for two energy, mm -hmm. conceal cards away one of them, attach the other to retreat into the Greninja, and then Giant Water Shuriken, I mean Moonlight Shuriken, both Mimikyu and Pidgey. This do you just turn. Go, do you just go on the, the, the gas here in this position? Do well, you just... I mean, you just need to take prizes. You yeah. know Hale is not going to uh, knock out your Pokemon, essentially. So all you need to do is be up in prizes when the game runs out. And if you're trying to win a long Sorry game, if you will, knocking out the Pidgey, right? Denying the Pidgey. That's been part of Joseph's strategy this whole time, and he could do it right now. Even just benching Greninja here and just drawing some cards, seeing your options, yeah. seeing what that looks like is okay in this position, I feel like. You're going to eventually go through these energies. You can understand you're probably not going to take all six prize cards this game. Wow, what a great two cards there. Finds Melody as well, so that could be acceleration for the following turn. As here we go. Energy attachment for turn, retreating into the Chien Pao. This can also <gasps> use Shivery Chill to find two, two more, more energy. Okay. So I actually don't know if I'm a huge fan of... So that, that really is the question, Pablo. Do you value an extra two energy cards here, or do you value keeping the cross switchers? I 100% value the cross switchers every single time. I mean, I don't fault Joseph for this. I'm pretty sure the game is locked after this happens. Uh, I'm fairly certain that there's no way Hale ends up taking three prizes before time runs out. With what? A no, an unpowerable Rotom? No Pidgeot? Are you going to attach to double turbos to Snorlax and hope you collapse your way into the win? There's no way to pull this off. This is effectively game over. See how it plays out. Moonlight Shuriken, two prizes taken. And what does Hale even have to work with? 
Not a lot at all. I mean, there's an Arvin in the hand, but I guess you do have the energy if you want to retreat this Rotom. Will be the Arvin played. So this can grab maybe the Defiance Fest out of the deck. Buying up Super Rod as well. Will be the Bravery Charm and Super Rod, the two cards grabbed. And this can bring back the Pidgey and the Mimikyu, but it's actually just going to be the Mimikyu going back into the deck. Yeah, I mean, Hale might be hoping to deck Joseph out with the remaining time by not letting him have a way to deal with Mimikyu, right? But Joseph finally has access to canceling Cologne this game. Mm -hmm. It's not priced, hasn't been discarded yet by Luxray. And we're going to see the retreat into the Mimikyu. No, into the Snorlax, interestingly enough. I mean, if the, if the Moonlight Shuriken's going to happen, it doesn't really matter what's in the active spot, essentially. That way you maybe play around uh, the Greninja moving out, and then you get more water energy with Chien Pao, something along those lines. But yeah, it's just going to be the Melanie putting some of these energy that were just discarded into play again. It finds another Cross Switcher. That's the fourth one in yeah. hand, I believe. Has access to that again. Subspace Swell is not quite there right now. So Subspace Swell is only dealing 150 damage right now, I believe. Or it's doing 180, so it's not quite there. Or it's 20 more, sorry. So it is 140 damage. So yeah. not quite enough to take a knockout on the Rotom. But over time, if you maybe draw into a few more cards, is Joseph considering concealed cards in this away? I don't really know if I value the two cards there over getting rid of the energy, but I what mean, difference does it really make? Exactly, right? right? I feel like in an, under normal circumstances, if this was game one, absolutely. But this is game three. Joseph, all he needs to do is make sure that he stays ahead these two prizes by the time the game, the, the timer is over, and then he's going to win. So I love this. Grabbing Spirit to making sure that Hale cannot draw any extra cards. Deny. Essentially, Joseph is playing the control game as well and gets to super rod back the energies immediately gets used out of that wow. uh, full use out of the super rod so i'm pretty sure the game is locked for joseph at this point yeah, joseph could even just win this game through normal standards with how well yeah. things are going i mean <laughs> pretty much there's switch in the hand cross switcher as well you got the rotom potentially i mean the rotom isn't really doing anything but it's still a free two prizes on the bench if you're able to gust it up yeah and then with spiritum essentially locking Rotom out of the game, right? Who's playing the control game now, Hale? <laughs> it will be two cards discarded, and yeah, Hale's changing the full approach. Four cards hit off Ms. Uh, Misfortune Sisters. Those are all getting discarded here. Now, you gotta wonder, what is Hale playing to, right? Like, he must have a win condition that he has come up with. I, I'm having trouble finding it myself, but there have been a lot of resources used by Joseph, right? A lot of switching cards, the cross switchers, the super odd, the V star. So maybe you can trap something in the active and go pass, 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 pass 30 times into a win, maybe? Potentially. I mean, with how many switching cards are still available? Yeah, it was great to get rid of that escape rope. And there's nine minutes left. So not only do you have to do that, but you got to get through these next nine. You got to do it within short time clock, Irida being played. So, I mean, Joseph has recently been playing just a lot of cards from hand and just discarding things. I mean, you gotta gotta play to your strategy, play to your options at this point. Let's take a look and see how many switching cards are left. So we know the switch is in hand. We see Escape Rope already queued to the top of the deck. Two cross switchers available in hand as well. I think there might be a switch. There yep, is. there's a switch left. It's Let's gonna see. be the lost vacuum lost a vacuum could get rid of the bravery charm from the active plus a switch you get the ko sure. six eight ten twelve no i guess you need to bench the luminion if you do that but i think at this point you're completely okay doing it with five there's 106 160 damage in play so it will be perfect it will be enough to take the knockout on snorlax oh yeah there you choice. go yeah you're right so now. energy switch going on it's actually going to be the collapsed st stadium leaving out of play and that's actually just it. It's just going to pass the turn back over. That was a very interesting decision. Yeah. I mean, it just feels like more cards. I mean, of course, you can't shuffle your hand into your deck, but it's more cards technically, right, that are just yeah. lost out. I mean, does it matter, though, right? Two prizes up. How can Hale possibly revert the situation? 
Defiance Vest will reduce the damage. That Nest Ball will likely get played into another Snorlax. Sure, this is powering up Palkia's damage output more. Maybe tempting Joseph to like fully bench and uh, extend for a knockout of 200 damage on the active Snorlax, and then you go counter catcher and trap whatever uh, Joseph benched that cannot attack you, something along those lines. So there is now enough bench Pokemon, uh, enough Pokemon in play that if one more bench Pokemon comes down, Rotom can go down with this cross switcher into subspace swell. And with how actively Joseph has just been playing these Iridas down, grabbing cards out, it feels like he still just wants to go on the offensive and try and take these six prize cards. Yeah, which is fair game, right? Definitely fair game, as we see. The Canceling Cologne, I really like this, because if the Canceling Cologne is in the hand, it cannot be Misfortune Sisters away. I think that's really, really clutch. That's true. It, it can still be discarded by Luxray, right? So there's yeah. sort of that back and forth, but if you can build up a hand to be big enough and your opponent has no support right now with Rotom being shut off, about to be knocked out it almost seems like, so it uh, seems like that wants to be the play. So just double checking right now, 200 damage with Subspace Well, double cross switcher, Rotom V coming up into the active spot and Subspace Well will grant Joseph two prize cards and is now two prizes away from advancing into the top four here in San Antonio. How can Hale put himself in a spot to get this out? The time is ticking. His back is up against the wall. How does he get out of this? Step one seems to be playing this cross, this counter catcher, bringing up Greninja and just passing the turn. Toss of a switch in hand. Can go on the offensive once again. Just needs one more bench Pokemon, right? And then you are knocking out this Norlax. You have the Luminion. And then you put yourself one Pokemon one turn away from winning. I feel like you might even consider attaching to the Greninja, so you have the out onto the Mimikyu, maybe? maybe Joseph. I, I don't know how many energy cards are left. They just draw another energy on there, so... It uh, looks like Joseph now got a prize penalty. Now, on in this case, though, play. it won't affect Hale, because Hale uh, isn't taking prize cards, but it will just be the counter catcher again, bringing up this Greninja into the active spot. Now, is there a final switching card? Joseph just went down to one prize card left. Yep. Oh, I think it's there. If Oh, wait, it's hold on. Not, the math is not. not. No, nope. the math is not. But Needs to find Lost Vacuum. Yeah. That's the key card. Lost Vacuum and Energy will grant Joseph the win in this very peculiar Game 3. Even right? boss's orders would do it. You can boss up the Mimikyu, then play the Canceling Cologne, and then from yeah, there, that, 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 that works well. too. That works too. See the countercatcher onto Luminion, not Chien Pao, which is very peculiar. I feel like I would have liked to see a countercatcher onto a Chien Pao, have them commit an energy, and then you go countercatcher again. Something along those lines. There is still a vacuum in the deck. I don't think there's any Two more switching more cards, but energies. again, boss plus cologne will get you the cards you need to win this yep. game. And with four minutes left. It's it's not looking too good for Hale. You can manually power up the Luminion, Melanie onto it. Yeah, and then next turn, you can look, go like attach and then wait a turn and then go Melanie. I feel like Joseph knows he's so close to winning the game, right? That's why he's digging with Greninja here. Now, where do you put this energy? I mean, honestly, you could just put the energy on the like, Greninja. I mean, I honestly don't even think you want to put the energy there. It's just. Just give yourself options. I mean, your play is canceling Cologne, right? So if your play is going to be to canceling Cologne and take the knockout, you might as well do it when you have boss's orders in hand as well. And, and your opponent can't really afford to put Snipe Fang down because uh, then you're just going to make this play. It will still be the Melanie, so drawing three cards. Again, looking for that boss's orders. Escape rope. Oh, that's Escape it! Escape rope. That will be game. That's... Okay, yeah. The with the Lost Vacuum. vacuum. Gets the KO. Joseph wins against Snorlax. What a series. I, I feel like if you had told me we're going to see three games this yeah. series, I would not have believed you, Ethan. I wouldn't have believed you. And quite interesting games, those were a lot to look back on. Joseph coming out on top, advancing into the top four. A great run for Hale, though. Played such a unique deck. I have to give him props. Looking at this list the entire time, you saw how it functions, how powerful Pidgeot is when it's set up. Not a shabby finish at all. Adding on to that resume, a regional champion, and now another top eight under his belt. 
indeed. And now this does set our top four, which is pretty cool to see. But what a game we just saw. That early aggression, that hydro break that we saw over and over in that very long drawn out game one. Chen Pao's Hail Blade attack as well, dealing a lot of damage, taking that very annoying Luxray, right? Like Luxray looked like to be the MVP of this series in that first game. And then that Cheryl, that Clutch Cheryl healing the Pidgey X, putting out of range of Palkia V-Star and being aggressive, right? Agro Pidgey did happen. Pidgeot putting some work. Hey, who says control decks can't take prize cards? Pidgeot has showed us this weekend. That could be a great attack with the Misfortune Sisters on Hail's side. But as we've seen in Pokemon TCG, luck enough isn't enough to win you series, especially here in top eight. And I believe that was the cross switcher that prompted Joseph to be like, you know what, on to game two. I am not winning this one. And then what a game two. It felt like Hale was under control despite losing the Pidgey, had a lock on his opponent, dealing with a Mimikyu, using up the V-Star. Rough game, rough game two. I mean, you hate to say it, but I think it came down to that double prize penalty. It's different game you saw joseph had enough gas in the tank to take that last prize but with how things shaped up that's just the nature of pokemon tcg and we headed into game three 15 ish minutes on the clock and the three <laughs> rare candy <laughs> not being taken or there's the peonia you can kind of see the three rare candy You're left really... in the prizes now don't know how huge of a difference that would have made it make but yeah you saw just Joseph was able to take all six prize cards because without that Pidgey off this deck, really struggles to set up, especially when Rotom is shut off thanks to Spirit 2. Yeah, even if Hill had grabbed one of those rare candies, there was no guarantee that, there was no way to get the Pidgey that turn. He would have relied on Rotom draw, and we saw Joseph, like, really be very aggressive in that game three, and he ended up winning this game despite getting a double prize penalty himself, right? That's the nature of Pokemon. Back and forth, intense. That's why I love watching these matches, Pablo. It's always a treat to see how things are going to play out. And 